People think that there are only 64 biomes in Minecraft, but there's actually a lot more that have been removed, most of which people don't even know about. So to see if these biomes deserve being removed, I'm going to be recreating every single one, starting with... Wait for it... The first biome ever, the Indev Island. And I know it doesn't look like much, but as the video goes on, the biomes are getting crazier and crazier. Even building biomes that literally nobody knows about. So with that being said, let's get to work on the next removed biome, which is the Sky Biome. And the material list is actually really easy. So let's quickly get all the materials we need. And now I just need to find a place to put it. And I think right above here should work. So now all that's left is to start building. And if you're wondering why this biome looks a lot like the Aether Dimension, it's because this biome inspired the creation of it. But after Notch took too long to officially release the Sky Dimension, a mod developer ended up taking matters into his own hands and made the Aether mod we all know today. So now to finish the biome off, I just need to add the 7x7 wooden in-depth house that she used to spawn in. Also, since it's pretty much just a floating rock, I'm gonna add some details to make it a cherry grove. And I know the removed biome wasn't a cherry grove but it just looks so much better so with that being said the sky biome is complete and with that biome done i think it's a good time to mention that i'm starting with the easier ones and moving on to the harder ones so with that being said it's time to get to work on the last easy biome which is the dirt biome from the infinite dimension snapshot and to actually get to this biome i first have to go to the infinite dimension snapshot then if i write the word isolation in a book and throw it into another portal you'll see that it's just a huge plane of dirt but if i go to the coordinate zero zero you'll see that there's actually a house here so now i just need to build all of this in my hardcore world and i'm gonna start with getting all the dirt but since getting all manually would take over five hours i'm gonna be building a dirt farm but the only problem is the materialist isn't too pretty like how am i supposed to get four ravagers so i'm just gonna do what i do best and let future me worry about that so let's start with getting the easy materials and even though i call these the easier materials they're still really annoying to obtain since most of them are redstone and require multiple items to make one but after four hours i finally have all the materials i need meaning i can start building the first part of the farm Okay, and now I just need to get the four Ravagers into these holes, and I'm sure it won't be too bad, right? Anyways, now that I got the Ravagers into the holes, I just need to finish up the farm. Finally, I just gotta go AFK here for about four hours. You know, I really need to get better at managing my time. Okay, and now that I got all the dirt, I can start building the biome. So let's go to zero, zero, and I'm gonna start with cleaning up the terrain. And while on one hand, I could chop it all down, on the other hand... Bro, are you serious right now? And now that I'm done with that, I can finally start building. And since making me go an infinite amount in each direction would literally take forever, I've only made it go 250 blocks in each direction. So with that being said, let's start by filling it all in. And now that I'm done with the train, I can start working on the house. And it actually had a decent amount of features, like the farm area, the upstairs, which had this cool little painting of a flower. And since I'm the best Minecraft player ever, I'm about to get a first try. And since I'm the best, I'm about to get a first try. I said I'm about to do a first try. Wait, give me a second. Yo, let's go. First try. That totally didn't take me five minutes. Anyways, this room also had an item that said home sweet home, but it obviously doesn't exist in the main version. The final room is a basement that had three chests, some bookshelves. This room also had a secret chest that had a bunch of rotten flesh, bones, and an iron sword called Stabby McStab Face. Now to finish the house off, I just need to add the three dogs with the different colored collars, the villager named Bob, and finally the two signs, one that says go away, and I don't know how to pronounce the other one, but it translates to no. No advertising please so with that the last easy biome is complete and now that i'm done with the easy biomes it's time to move on to the medium ones which there's actually four of but for now i'm just gonna focus on the first one which is the original version of the nether and just like the in-dev biome this biome is also an island and since i already have a stone and dirt farm i can start building the island and now that the island is finished, I can start making it look like the old nether. And I'm actually going to start by adding the nether fog to the sky. The only problem is, it turns out it's pretty much impossible to make the sky look like the nether one without using a texture pack. I even spent an hour trying to do that glass fog thingy with spheres, but I couldn't get it to work. So I did what I do best and just gave up. 
with that idea that is you see after a bit of thinking i thought why try to replicate something that still exists so i moved to the nether you know i should have just done this in the first place anyways i'm just gonna start by remaking the island also if you're wondering the original reason i didn't make this island the nether was because it would make recreating a later part of this biome a lot more difficult but i guess that's just something future me will have to deal with and now that I'm done with the main part of the island, I'm going to be building the in-dev house. And if you didn't know, you actually used to spawn in this house. Now, the next thing I'm going to add is oak tree saplings and poppies because apparently they used to be able to spawn in the nether. Oh... I kind of forgot about that. Okay, and now that I'm done with the landscape, it's time to move on to the hard part of the build, which is getting rid of all these nether mobs. And as you can see, if I kill them, more and more will just continue to spawn. So I'm going to be turning my game to peaceful mode. Well, sadly, it's not that easy. You see, I have to make this machine called a mob switch, which fills the mob cap of Minecraft and prevents any new mobs from spawning. And the machine actually isn't too bad. Yeah, this is literally it. So now I just have to AFK here and wait for enough zombies to go through the nether portal. With that, the mob switch is complete. And as you can see, there's now no new nether mob spawning. Now for the finishing touch, I need to transport some mobs from the overworld to the nether. Since as you can see, there were no nether mobs back then. And to do this, I'm just going to trick some mobs into going into the nether portal, then name tagging them so they won't despawn. And with that out of the way, the original version of the nether is complete. Now the next biome I'm going to be working on was pretty much the complete opposite of the nether, which was known as paradise, and this biome actually had a lot of distinct features. But for now, let's just find the place to build it. And I need to make sure it's pretty far away from the mainland, and I think right here should do. So let's start building the island. And now that the main part of the island is complete, I'm going to go around using sand to connect the island to the ocean floor. Since as you can see, it's kind of just floating right now. And doing this actually took a lot longer than expected. I thought it was only going to take about 20 minutes. But no, after collecting and placing down all the sand, over two hours had passed. And I bet you could assume that I had so much fun placing all that sand down. By the way, I was being sarcastic if you couldn't tell. Anyways, now that I'm done with that, I'm going to go around adding grass so the dirt can turn into grass. And I'm also going to be adding some trees to add more life to the island. And talking about adding life, I'm also going to be bringing in some piggies and sheep so they can enjoy that island's beauty. Now to finish the landscape off, I'm going to be adding the end of house. And I'm also going to be adding loads of poppies and dandelions because as you can see, there used to be hundreds of them everywhere. One slight problem though, I don't have hundreds of poppies and dandelions. So I built a flower farm. And I know it's kind of small, but size doesn't always matter, right? Right? Anyways, now I'm just gonna go around adding all the dandelions and poppies. And now that there's more flowers than you can count, I'm gonna move on to the distinct features I was talking about earlier. The main one being that it's always daytime, no matter how long you stay in the world. And I know what you're thinking, but Mello, how are you supposed to do that without using commands? And that's a great question, because I have no idea. Okay, so here's the game plan. So I'm pretty much going to be building a ginormous dome that covers the entire island. And this is going to act like a fake sky for when it's nighttime. So now I just need to get all the light blue concrete. And as you can see, I need quite a bit of it. This is going to take forever. Actually, wait, never mind. I forgot I had one of these thingy-mabobbers. Okay, now I just need to convert all the concrete powder into concrete using this machine. And I'm also going to make some beacons to speed the building process up. And now all that's left is to start building. And placing down 50,000 concrete naturally takes a long time. But i just kept building and continued finishing row after row also if you're wondering how i know where everything goes it's a mod called by Madka that lets you make a schematic of literally anything in the game anyways three hours later i'd finally finished placing down all the concrete for the dome and now that i'm done with the dome i'm gonna be adding some clouds and to prevent mobs from spawning i'm gonna be using my overworld mob switch which is pretty much the exact same as the one we made earlier for the nether but it's for the overworld finally the last distinct feature was that all crops would grow 10 percent faster but I have no idea how I would do that without commands. So with that being said, the paradise is perfect. And now that I'm done with that biome, it's time to move on to the Cha-Ching biome. And I know this biome never existed, but there's actually a separate reason I'm building it, which you'll figure out later. But for now, let's just focus on getting all the resources needed to build the biome. And the material list actually isn't too bad. I just need some gold and emerald blocks, which I could just get from my farms. And now all that's left is to start building. So enjoy this super cool montage of me making it all.
And now that I'm done with the biome, you can see that there's still one major problem, it being that it's too small. But on second thoughts, it's not like size always matters, so I guess it's not too big of a problem, right? Anyways, that's where you come in. You see, for every subscriber we get off this video, I'm going to be adding one emerald block to the biome. And the main reason I'm doing this is because me and my friend Zenith are in a sub race to 250,000 subscribers. And I would say I want to beat him, but that would be a lie since I need to beat him. So if you want to do me a huge favor, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again, and I think it's time to get back to the video. Now, before we move on to the crazy hard biomes, there's one more medium difficulty biome I have to build. And it was one of the first biomes ever. Ever, which was known as winter mode and this biome came into existence all the way back in minecraft alpha also you only had a one in four chance of spawning in it but when minecraft alpha 1.2 came out it was removed so with that being said let's start building the biome and i'm gonna start by finding a place to build it and since i needed to be able to snow what better place than the top of this mountain and i'm gonna start by flattening it all out and a couple seconds later, boom, the whole mountain is flat. And now that the area is relatively flat, I'm going to make a 140 by 140 platform of cobblestone so the terrain can sit on. And now I can finally start building the actual terrain. And as you can see, it was pretty much just the overworld terrain. And luckily, I already have farms for all the materials. So let's start building. Also, something I forgot to mention earlier is that there's a bunch of other removed biomes that I'm not going to be building because they're extremely boring and have no unique features. For example, the bamboo jungle hill. And as you can tell, by the name it's just a hill with bamboo on top of it and with that being said i think you can see why i decide not to build these and just like that i'm done with the base part of the biome and now that the base is complete i need to wait for it to snow so the snow can cover all the dirt so i waited and waited and waited some more and when i thought i couldn't wait any longer it finally happened just kidding i had to do some more waiting but after waiting for what felt like forever it finally started snowing and now i just gotta do some more waiting while the snow covers the ground and it looks like doing all that waiting was just a huge waste of time since as you can see there's still loads of parts that aren't covered with snow so with that being said I think it's a good time to introduce you to the Snowmaker 7.197 thousand and as you can see using this will let me get an infinite amount of snow so now i just gotta do some more waiting and wait till i get enough snow yay anyways now that i got all the snow i'm just gonna go around covering all the bald spots and now that i'm finished with that i need to make the illusion that's always snowing and since i'm 99.989169928399 percent sure that's literally impossible to do without commands i'm gonna start by making a huge dome just like the one i made for the paradise biome earlier and now that the dome's done i'm gonna be moving on to the next part <laughs> you see what i did there domes done it's pretty funny right okay yeah i'll stop anyways as i was saying i need to go back to the snowmaker 7.719 thousand and the reason for coming back is because i need some snow blocks to scatter throughout the sky to make that illusion that's always snowing and i know it's not perfect but i'm pretty sure it's the closest we could get to the original without using any commands so now for the finishing touches i'm just going to be adding some trees since i totally didn't forget to do that earlier and with this i'm done with the medium difficulty biomes meaning i can move on to the hard Okay, now that we're in the hard ones, it's important to note that there's two of them. And with that being said, I'm gonna start with recreating one of, if not the biggest biome of the whole video, which is the moon. And if you say it sounds fake, I wouldn't blame you since I know it sounds crazy. But if we go to the 23W13A or B snapshot, then if we spend the next three hours getting basic materials, making another portal, killing blazes to get blaze rods, killing endermen for ender pearls, finding the stronghold, going to the end, beating the ender dragon, and finally getting an elytra. And now after doing all that we'll finally be able to get to the moon actually wait i forgot to get some rockets and now with all the preparation out of the way i can finally get to the moon so now i just need to fly 700 blocks into the air and while i get there let me tell you a bit more about this update so it's actually the 2023 april fools update and actually has quite a bit of cool features the main one being these prompts that always pops up and if you vote on it it will happen in game another cool feature is these potions that let you turn into any mob in the game and there's also some that lets you change your size yo look at me i'm a 
giant pig. Moo. Another feature was the moon. And talking about the moon, would you look at that? We're finally here. Also, as you could see, the moon had these cows that moon walked. And now that I've shown you this, it's time to start building it. And just like the snow and paradise biome, I'm also going to be making a dome for the moon. And the reason for this is to create that infinite void that we all know as space. One small problem, though. The dome's almost 100,000 blocks. Yeah, I'm going to be here for a while. Anyways, now that we got all the concrete, all that's left is to start building. Actually, wait, I'm gonna first place some beacons down to speed the building process up by 20%. And while 20% might not seem like a lot, it adds up quickly when you're placing tens of thousands of blocks down. Now, with all the preparation out of the way, we could finally start building. And as you can imagine, placing down almost 100,000 concrete takes a long time. And I mean a very long time. But I legit just sat there placing blocks for hours on end. And six grueling hours later, I'm finally done placing all the concrete. And now that I'm done placing down all the concrete, I'm gonna go slap up some fish to get some sea lanterns. Then I'm gonna be randomly scattering them throughout the dome. And these sea lanterns are gonna be representing stars in the sky. And I actually really like how they look with shaders on. So now that the dome's done, I can start getting the materials to start working on the moon. And since blocks of cheese don't exist in this version, I'm gonna be using endstone blocks since they look pretty much the exact same. The only issue with that though is that I need 95,000 endstone. And if you've ever mined endstone, you know that you can't insta mine it so imagine how big of a pain getting 95,000 would be luckily i have three methods i'm gonna try and see which one's the fastest and i'm gonna be starting with the pickaxe and to test this out i'm gonna be mining for five minutes and then seeing how much endstone i get And after 5 minutes of mining, I got 10 stacks plus 16, which adds up to 656. And I know it might seem like a lot, but after doing some basic math, you'll realize that I'd have to be mining for 12 hours. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. So let's start testing the second method, which is a wither and i know it sounds crazy but let me cook you see when the wither is under half health it goes into its ground phase and just chases you around blowing up every block around it so let me test this for five minutes and i'll be right back and after five minutes i got drum roll please 1664 endstone which is almost three times faster than the pickaxe however the downside to this is that you need a lot of food so the wither won't kill you and your armor loses durability really quickly so with that being said let's move on to the last method which is a tnt bomber and i've actually already gone ahead and tested this one out and after five minutes i got drum roll please 1152 and i know it's less than the 1664 i got from the wither but i'm actually gonna use this method since i don't gotta dig those extremely long tunnels and i don't gotta worry about my armor breaking so i think this method is overall better meaning i just gotta spend the next few hours getting all the end stone And now, all that's left is to start building. And honestly, nothing crazy happened. It was literally me just placing tens of thousands of pieces of endstone down. So enjoy this quick time lapse of me placing it all. I just realized I forgot to have these highly stimulating videos for good measure. And now that the terrain's done, there's just a few more features I need to add, such as scattering a bunch of these little moon rovers throughout the biome, making some questionable looking pixel art to represent the earth. And before you say anything, I tried, okay? And I can't forget the moon walking cows. Finally, I just need to add these huge copper structures that pop up whenever you step on the pressure plate on top of the rovers. So let's start by getting the materials for it, which is pretty much just a ton of copper, but there's actually a couple other little things too. And now all that's left is to start building. Also, it's important to note that i downscaled them by quite a bit since the original ones are massive now with the main part of the structure done i'm gonna be adding some buttons soul lanterns and rods the resupply chest that had a bunch of random materials in them and finally the green shulker boxes that had the lab materials in them and now to finish the biome off i'm gonna be building two more of these structures and with that the moon is officially complete 
And now that the moon is complete, it's time to move on to the final biome, which is underscore generated one, two on second thoughts. I'm not saying all that, but you get the point. Nobody has ever heard of this biome before. So with that being said, let's start building it. And I'm gonna start by flattening a 120 by 120 area. Since that's the rough size, I'm gonna be making the biome. And now I need to mine this area all the way down to bedrock. And by my totally accurate calculations, it will take three bajillion years. Okay, maybe it won't take that long, but either way, it'll take a long time to do it manually luckily i can use the exact same machine i used earlier to collect the endstone to do all the hard work for me unluckily i have to clear out all the water manually and since sponges are the best way to clear water out i think you know what time it is Okay, now that we got all the sponges, I just need to clear out all the water, which actually isn't too much. Finally, I just need to build the machines and let them run. Also, I built three of them to speed the process up by quite a bit, which might be a bit overkill, but the faster the better, right? Okay, and now that the first cycle is done, I just need to let them run one more time so they get all the way down to bedrock. Also, the main reason I'm making this hole is because the generate biome didn't have bedrock at the bottom of it, meaning I'm gonna have to destroy all the bedrock at the bottom of this hole. And while I would say that's future me's problem, it looks like the TNT bombers have already reached bedrock, meaning it's current me's problem. And while I could use a normal method we all know about, doing that would take literal days since I have to destroy about 50,000 thousand bedrock luckily there's a machine that i can build that destroys an average of one bedrock per second however the downside to this machine is that for every piece of bedrock i want to destroy i need one piston meaning i need about fifty thousand pistons and since each piston is nine individual materials that's 450 thousand materials <sighs> this is gonna take a while and when i say it's gonna take a while i mean crafting them is gonna take a while since i already have farms for all the materials well except for iron i still have this really small iron farm that doesn't produce much luckily i have a full vault that's made out of iron that i made in the previous episode so i'm just gonna borrow a bit of these iron blocks and now all that's left is to start crafting the pistons Okay, and now that I got all the pistons, I just need to get five pieces of ancient debris because apparently the machine needs them to run. Now, with all the preparation out of the way, I can build the machine. Now, I just need to AFK here until the first layer is completely broken. And that's the first layer done, meaning I just have to move the machine one block down and repeat the process. So there's a second layer. Um, I think this machine broke my game. Like, how is this even possible? The third layer, there's the fourth layer, and there's the void. And now with the bedrock fully destroyed, I can finally start building the final biome. And I'm actually going to start by making a huge purple concrete wall to represent the purple fog in the actual biome. And I've actually already gone ahead and afk my concrete duper, so all that's left is to build it. Okay, and now that the wall's complete, all I need to do is to start working on the actual biome. And luckily, most of the materials are easily obtainable. Like for the concrete, I could just AFK my concrete duper. And terracotta is really easily obtainable since you can insta mine it. The only material that's relatively hard is crimson hyphae. Or is it hyphae? Wait, how do you even say this word? Hyphae. Oh, okay, so I need some crimson hyphae. However, since that would take forever to get it all manually, I'm gonna build a simple farm for it. And would you look at that? All the materials have magically appeared. So now I just need to build the farm, AFK it for a bit. And now that I got all the materials, all that's left is to start building the biome. And I honestly thought building this biome was gonna be relatively fast. But no, due to all the zigzags, ups, downs, and different colored concrete, it ended up taking about 10 hours. But I just kept placing down blocks and I eventually finished. Now, before i make the surrounding area look a bit nicer i want to let you know that i've just made a brand new discord server so if you've ever wanted to ask me a question give me some feedback or literally anything else this is your chance to do that also the first 100 people to join get a super special world that will never come back so with that being said i just need to fill in the gap and i'm also going to add some trees so the terrain doesn't look so flat and with that the final removed biome is complete and after building every removed biome, I can confidently say that these biomes should have never been removed because they make Minecraft feel so much more unique and different, which is something this world really needs.